All right, everyone, Cody here. So as you know, I make chain mail. And a little while ago, I got to thinking, well, chain mail has chain in its name. What if I made chain mail from chain? <laughs> so I ended up going around to every Walmart in the state and I cleaned them out of all of their two aught passing link chain. <laughs> I've got uh, something like 130 pounds of chain here. Let's see what I can make out of it. Now this chain is iron with a zinc coating. Unfortunately, that zinc coating is going to have to come off. Uh, zinc is great for corrosion resistance, but it's terrible for heat treating and welding, because it tends to burn and make toxic fumes. So I'm gonna put it in this bucket here. And I'm going to add some dilute hydrochloric acid. I've already got some water in there to help dilute it. I'm just going to add some in there. It won't take a whole lot. Zinc is very reactive with the acid. You might notice I'm doing this outside. Help with the fumes. And I'm only going to do a few boxes of chain at a time. I'll just let that sit there for a little while. Now that the rate of hydrogen bubbling has slowed down significantly and the metal is now a dull gray color, I'd say the majority of the zinc has been removed. And now I'm going to pour off the acid. I would leave the acid on the chain overnight. I'm not going to do this one-handed. But uh, the acid does also dissolve the iron. In fact, that's probably what the majority of the bubbling that is currently going on is. And so I'm going to take the chain out of the acid, or rather I'm going to pour the acid off into this jug so I can save it for later to do more chain. I just rinsed the chain with water to remove the last of the acid, and now I'm drying it off quickly to minimize the amount of rusting, because now the unprotected iron is going to be very prone to rust. So now that the zinc is removed, the next step is to remove the temper. You see, chain is usually hardened, this chain included, and that makes it hard to work with, makes it hard to bend and cut. So I'm going to heat the chain until it's glowing red hot using my furnace here, and then let it slowly cool to remove that hardness. And let it cool. See, by cooling it slowly, the carbon can leave the iron crystals, and that results in a much softer material. I can always harden it again later by heating it up and then quenching it suddenly so that the carbon can't leave the crystals. So this is what happens if I try to bend the chain without heating it first. You see here, the weld has broken. And if I try to cut the chain and twist open the link, I end up breaking it, like this. See, I cut it there, but when I twisted it, it broke there. Heating it solves these issues. So now that the chain has been softened, I've been going through and tapping each link with a hammer to adjust it from this oval shape to a more rounded square shape. I've done some testing and this oval shape just does not fly for making chain mail. Uh, it binds and locks together and it doesn't sit flat and sometimes you can't get the links in at all, but this square shape. This is very nice, especially for the European 4-in-1 weave. This, like the rings lock into the corners, and then you get these flat sides that sit on the top and the bottom, so it makes for a very smooth fabric. So, anyway, here's the before and after. So 
now that I've adjusted the chain, it's time to cut it into rings. Now I'm going to only cut half of them, leave the other half solid, and I'm going to try to cut them on the weld. That's the weakest point anyway, so that may as well be cut there. Okay, just put a little chop in it, skip a ring, rotate to the weld, and chop again. And now, I just open the rings. I have to use two pairs of pliers to do this. Even though the chain has been softened, it is still pretty thick metal. Like that. And of course, I can, I can separate the rings. Up here. Okay, now that I have rings, it's time to start knitting them into chain mail. So, let's uh, put those closed rings on open ring and close it back up. And then Continue the pattern. I'm not showing how to make chain mill in this video, just show what I'm doing. One box of chain and about an hour and a half of work makes this much chain mail. Actually, not quite. I end up having to add about four rings to it. It's almost enough to make this much. But yeah, I've been making it in patches like this just because it's a lot easier to move around. If I start putting them together into larger sheets, it just gets really heavy and cumbersome. But now that I got several of them done, I think it's time to go start welding the links. So, there we go. This patch of chain chain mill is now fully welded. So now that I've got some patches of chain welded, it's time to start putting them together. As you can see, I've got a few of them together already. I'm just going to go around and link up the edges of each of the little patches. I've got quite a few of these uh, open rings left. Hey boy. <laughs> and these rings here that make up the seams between the patches, I'll go back through and weld them later and actually this section over here, I've already done that. So, here we are. I've welded in three more patches. So I've rolled up the chain mill that I've done so far. And I tied it with some stainless steel wire and I balanced it on top of a crucible inside of my furnace. And now, I'm going to heat it up to red hot. Alright, so I've got a container of water here to quench the chain. It should be hot now. 
I'm going to turn off the gas and pull it out and cool it off suddenly. And what this does is it locks the carbon inside the iron crystals. It doesn't give it time to leave. So there it is. You might be able to see some burning coals. Uh, that's because off camera I threw some sticks in there just to help burn up the excess oxygen to minimize the amount of metal that I'd lose to scale. Yeah, there we are. It's crazy that it was able to heat this much water up from near freezing to, you know, that's like hot tub temperature. Okay, so there it is. In theory, I've rehardened the chain, but I've probably hardened it too much. Now I need to heat it up again to take away a little bit of the hardness and give it more flexibility. Because right now, if you hit it with a hammer, it'd probably just break. You want it to be able to flex a little bit. So to do that, I need to heat it up again, but not as much. So I'm just going to load it into the oven. I'm going to heat to around 450 for a couple of hours, and this should temper the metal, making it less brittle. <laughs> so, there we are. A 42 pound sample of the chain chainmail. Very nice. It's about the right size for maybe a welcome mat or mud flaps for my truck. <laughs> I just wired it on there to see how it looks. If I were to put that on permanently, I'd, I'd bolt it in solid, but yeah, why not? <laughs> Rock isn't gonna go through that. But I definitely wanna expand this to like the size of an area rug or even a blanket. This would be the world's safest weighted blanket. <laughs> but on that, I would like to know just how safe it is, how strong it is, what it actually takes to break it. So, to test it out, I've come down to visit the water jet channel. We are, however, not gonna be using the water jet today. It's busy doing something else. I'm just gonna show putting it on this. Oh, you can see the, you got some rings in there. You wanna get a close up on that? So that's from your first test with the other chain. <laughs> yeah, it was more dangerous than wearing nothing, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna, Put this over the bus. Oh yeah, look at that. He's. I'm not worried about him. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, that'll be my test is hitting it with a rock hammer. <laughs> I mean, it's, like it's actually the weave's tight enough; it doesn't go through. Yeah, that's impressive. Awesome. Well, let's see. Let's see what you guys can do. We've got some phantom cameras and an air cannon. Got a bunch of sand and wood to stop anything in case it does go through. All right. So go over to their channel. I'll put a link in the description. Hope you enjoy. But for my part, I'll see you next time. All right. Three, two, one. Got it. Nice. Ah, no way, Cody. That is bonkers. It's stuck. Uh oh.